So we had the teardown of the PlayStation 5 console. And afterwards, there have been a lot of questions I've seen come up around the idea of the SSD itself being soldered to the board, as in it's not removable or replaceable, which is something that we technically had with the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 3. Kind of with the PS2, but keep in mind the hard drive on the PS2 was very specific to certain games like Final Fantasy XI, and most people didn't even have it for the fat PS2. The slim PS2 came out and just even got rid of the hard drive bay. But with the PlayStation 3, you could change out your hard drive if it failed. The PlayStation 4, you could do the same thing. Now with the PlayStation 5, it's going away from that, and people also should keep in mind the Xbox Series X and the Series S are doing the same thing. It's just across the board, they decided probably for cost, speed, latency, all this stuff, they were like, you know what, we're just going to solder it right to the board and we'll put it fairly close to the APU itself for ease of communication between them. But that does bring up the question of overall longevity of the system, preservation, and even the life cycle that appears to be fixed now. But we're going to talk about that here and exactly how fixed that life cycle is. Guys, if you enjoyed these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave Plus channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Let's go over here. This is uh, PSU.com. We picked it up seemingly from Notebook Notebook Check, I believe. Started talking about it and other places picked it up. It says PS5 soldered 825 gigabyte SSD could put a fixed life cycle on the console. And technically, that is correct because SSDs as well as basically every electronic has an inherent life cycle to it where it will eventually break down and probably stop working. But the SSD is the part that caught everyone by surprise because they were hoping, I think, that it would be a separate board or something that would be replaceable. Maybe the system would have two sockets and it comes with its own NVMe uh, chip already in there, but it's socketed in so you can change it out if you have to. And that's just us kind of getting used to what Sony's done with the PS4 and the PS3. Because keep in mind, the Xbox One X and the Xbox One S, while they do use hard drives that can be changed out, they were not user replaceable. You had to open the system, you had to run a certain script, you had to partition the hard drive in just the right way for it to work. Microsoft did not intend for you to open it up. And those drives are much more delicate than the NVMe drives that we're going to be using going into this generation. So... Technically, if you're okay with your Xbox One X and your One S the way it was, and even your original VCR, you should be thrilled going to the NVMe SSD that's going to be in the Series X, the Series S, or the PlayStation 5. But let's continue down here. It does say all SSDs, be it soldered or removable, have an endurance values measured in MTBF. That's mean time between failures or TBW, terabytes written. Now, of the two, I would say terabytes written is probably the one that you would hit first. Whereas mean time between failures, we'll talk about how how long that would take to actually hit. Uh, if assuming all other parts of the console will run without any issues on the interim, the internal 825 gigabyte SSD will eventually fail and be irreplaceable. Whatever happens next to the rest of the console is anyone's guess at the moment. Now, what's funny is further down in that same article, it says the good news is that MTBF and TBW values are usually very high before failure is expected for most gamers. This would thankfully be a tough ceiling to reach. You might be wondering, how tough is that ceiling to reach? Well, unfortunately for the PS5, we have no way of knowing that now. Sony could release numbers maybe when the PS5 comes out just for warranty sake or just overall letting us know that the system probably will outlive us. But let's take a look at an NVMe drive from Samsung from the Gen 3 NVMe and see how long that would last. Now, this is the data sheet for the Samsung 970 Evo NVMe. That's the Gen 3 NVMe. And we can see we do have MTBF. We do have terabytes written. All that is here. And they even do a five-year limited warranty. So, yeah, NVMe drives typically are, are pretty, pretty solid. Like, if you put one in your computer and they're even giving you a five-year limited warranty, even they're like, yeah, you're probably not going to have too many issues with, with this device. But we have a 250 gig, a 500 gigabyte, one terabyte, and two terabyte model at the top here. We would be, I guess, most focusing on, like, the one terabyte because that would be the same for, like, you know, Series X. Uh, and 825, I would say, is relatively close enough to where that's the best example. But MTBF, that's the mean time between failures. 1.5 million hours. That is, uh, I believe, people are doing math on Twitter with that, like 170 years <laughs> for that. That's the one you'll be least likely to hit. 
Now, the other one, terabytes written, is the one you'd probably be most likely to hit. That's 600 terabytes. So, your 825 gigabyte, or in this case, your one terabyte, maybe like the Series X, would have to have 600 terabytes written to it before there would be concern around the drive and its overall endurance and maybe breaking down. 600 terabytes would probably take you a while to hit. I mean, it really would if you think about it. And that's writing to it, of course. That's not necessarily like, oh, I'm reading stuff from it. So I guess if you download a game and you put it on there and it writes to the to the drive, then you would start counting against that. There are still some small writes back and forth when you're doing things, saving games, updating, all of that. But if you're using this for like uh, heavy data storage and stuff, you would probably use that more. However, most likely 600 terabytes is going to take you a while to hit as well. I mean, just don't download Call of Duty Warzone more than like four or five times and you shouldn't hit it. This will probably outlive some of the other parts of the system that are gonna be under much heavier stress when it comes to heat and energy and power. Like the power supply would probably break down way before any of this stuff would and at least that's replaceable. But just keep in mind, most people, when something like that breaks down, they just throw it out. So, so most likely, you won't have any real issue with the NVMe drive, but keep in mind, parts just fail in general. They malfunction, that's why there are warranties on them. So I'm not gonna say it's, it's definitely not gonna fail, but you're not going to probably run out of time necessarily with the SSD overall. But yes, technically there is a limit on the system when it comes to the overall SSD setup being soldered to the board. And I am curious if Sony has any plans going forward when they do inevitably do a slim revision and technology continues to advance and I'm sure they'll have like a die shrink or, or they'll be able to make the system more efficient and that heat sink will shrink. If maybe they look into having the NVMe drive being socketed in some way with their custom controller, maybe it just becomes a separate board that we can replace if it does fail. Flash memory does fail. It has. I've seen it happen with uh, systems like the Xbox 360 Slim that, that had like four gigabytes on board. And if that failed, the system would have a hard time updating. It would corrupt. And fortunately, that was socketed in some, but not all. So that was an issue. However, that is much older flash memory, overall interface, all this than what's in the PlayStation 5. My only concern is that custom controller because we don't know much about it right now and how long its overall longevity is. So out of everything, maybe that. But for the most part, you're probably going to have your system outlive you if the most the thing you're most concerned about is the endurance of the NVMe SSE, SSD inside that's soldered to the board. But let me know what you guys think about this down below with the uh, seemingly Sony getting rid of the idea of being able to change out a part that can fail, but we were dealing with some pretty terrible 5400 RPM drives. Like they, Microsoft and Sony looked for the cheapest drives they could for the 50, 5400 RPM, two and a half inch drives they put in there. And they just basically said, good luck. And they failed, but we could change them out. You can put an SSD in there. It was interesting to see how that worked out. But let me know you guys think about this one down below. Make sure you like the video on the way out if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you next time.